and we have to be mindful and of this particular condition. The treatment varies if the patient has well compensated liver disease uh, uh, as contrasted to decompensated liver disease. I will now talk about the well compensated liver disease. This is taken from the guideline that is now in the Ministry of Health uh, website as well as what has been sent to us. And I'll be drawing upon this heavily and just expanding on it. So for the treatment of chronic heavy infection in the E-antigen positive group, the ALT is an important uh, marker to help us decide on when to treat. And we divide that into ALT under the upper limit of normal, ALT in the range of one to two times upper limit of normal, and ALT increased beyond twice the upper limit of normal. When it is under the upper limit of normal, and no treatment is needed, but we need to monitor these patients because potentially the ALT might rise and treatment may be indicated, and therefore the recommendation is for the ALT to be monitored at least six monthly. If the suspicion is there, you might want to monitor them three monthly or closer and the e-antigen assessment is also useful. Should there be any change of the ALT reading, then perhaps we might be prompted to consider treatment. If the ALT range is in the 1 to 2 range for e-antigen positive patients, then the treatment indication is not quite there yet, but we should monitor these patients closely, preferably 3 monthly, if not 6 monthly. We should check the e-antigen level, because if the e-antigen starts to become weak, positive, then we are prompted to know that these patients are entering the immunoclearance phase. They are attempting to do a HPE antigen seroconversion, and perhaps we can wait a bit longer. Most of us would then do the HPV DNA at this point. If you were to encounter this in your clinic, you can give your gastroenterology colleague a call to guide you, or if you want, you can refer uh, this patient to uh, one of us to take the mani uh, management further. In this group of patients, especially if they are a little bit older, they might be accumulating fibrosis, which ultimately leads on to cirrhosis, even though the ALT is not more than two times normal. Then a liver biopsy is useful to know if there is ongoing severe necroinflammation or the accumulation of significant fibrosis, which then would become an indicator to enter this patient into treatment. If the ALT is above two times normal, then it is an indicator of ongoing necroinflammation. If this persists beyond three months, generally we would enter these patients into treatment. Then the next group is the E-antigen negative patients. These are the slightly more tricky group because the natural history and the behavior is slightly different. And for patients with an ALT of under uh, one upper limit of normal, then the recommendation is similar to the E-positive patients. We just monitor them. We do not treat them. Uh, ALT should be done relatively closely to get a flavor of the variation over time. If they're still normal, we continue to monitor them. If the ALT gets elevated, then they will fall into the second category for us to consider. In the 1 to 2 range, where generally we do not recommend treatment, there will be a group of patients who will have significant injury over time. Therefore, it is important to monitor this group three to six monthly on the ALT. Um, if the viral count is above 2,000 international units, then this group of patients are at higher risk of accumulating cirrhosis. A liver biopsy or a fibro scan as an alternative uh, will be a useful guide to see if they are accumulating damage, which then would uh, indicate that they need treatment. And if, however, the ALT is more than two times normal, then it's a little bit simpler again. We repeat it, observe it over three months. If it's persistently elevated, then treatment is indicated, especially if the viral load is above 2,000 IU per mil. It is important to note that when the DNA level is low, sometimes it's, it does not incite the body's immune system to fight against the virus and Therefore, there is no inflammation arising from it. Therefore, if the ALT is high in this group of patients, especially when the DNA is less than 2,000, uh, then perhaps there might be another cause for the elevated ALT. And it's not uncommon in a setting to see patients with fatty liver with a high ALT. 
And one of the challenges is often to try to tell between one or the other. And it is a difficult uh, clinical decision to make, but we have, again, tools to help us liver biopsy, uh, monitoring ALT over time, and giving a therapeutic trial of fatty liver treatment. How about decompensated hepatitis B virus patients? This, I mean patients who are still actively replicating and they have cirrhosis and the cirrhosis decompensates. Uh, it's a clear-cut situation that treatment is indicated, treatment is urgent, and treatment can reverse uh, the decompensated state and give some improvement to the underlying liver function. Sometimes it can be too late when the decompensation is very advanced, even if we want to start antiviral treatment. Um, so it's important to refer this group quickly uh, to a gastroenterologist or a hepatologist for the institution of both antiviral treatment and a very important supportive treatment in the setting of cirrhosis. And what treatment options are there available to us? I will be just giving an overview of the treatment options available because this will take many, many lectures to go into details. What is available to us at the moment are interferon and nucleoside analogs. <clears throat> in terms of interferon, we have standard interferon still available to us, pegylated interferon, which is the long-acting version which we need only to give once a week as opposed to thrice a week. And nucleoside and nucleotide analogs are inhibitors of viral replication. Approved medicines comprise lamivudine, adefovir, telbividine, and tecavir, and the latest to come into the market is tenofovir. And this is a table that summarizes the outcomes for e-antigen positive patients for each of the various current treatment options against the respective outcomes. As you can see, in terms of interferon, whether it's standard interferon or pegylator interferon, the performance is roughly the same. And as contrasted to the nucleoside analogs, I just want to highlight a few uh, significant distinguishing factors between these two groups of treatment. And first is that the DNA lost during treatment is less profound in the interferon group as opposed to the nucleoside analog group because they work by means of viral suppression anyway. The E conversion rates appears to be quite uniform across both groups. Perhaps the pegylated interferon offers a better E zero conversion. The HPS antigen loss, the so-called uh, ultimate goal in treatment, can be attained in a small proportion of individuals being treated with interferon, but appears to be elusive in the nucleoside analog group. And on treatment, normal ALT is common on nucleoside analog treatment, but not during interferon treatment. But that is not surprising because the work of interferon is to cause uh, immune reaction of the body against the hepatitis B. So there will be a period of increased inflammation, um, and that is what leads to the successful seroconversion that we want. And of course, histological improvement um, is uh, attained using nucleoside analog. And not uh, this. This is just that in in that particular study, it was not made available. 